Hello, good evening to everyone. Um, we are back with the live after a long time. Um, and I guess, I hope you've um, guessed it that uh, we've kind of been busy with the whole uh, experience week prep. And uh, for people who've been following us, uh, Arohi Life Education and Coversity for a couple of uh, time now and wondering what this is really experience week is a great route. and today's special is it's a very interesting person um, she's a parent a single parent at that oh lovely we just give me hi. one moment yes hi hi okay so we are going to be talking about two folks today very interesting people at that uh, so it's going to be i'm hoping for a lot of interesting conversations to flow from this live um i'm also waiting for the uh second okay we also have our second uh, host for the day hi ishan uh, ishan hi. if you could just settle down at one place would help us yeah yeah okay so uh, i will quickly uh, you know uh, give a context of what the live could be and uh, we'll see how the conversations flow so yes we have uh, sunita who is mom to two children uh, unschooling children over the years you know a lot of different uh, trajectories followed uh, one is a teenager who's kind of charting his own professional journey uh, the younger one is well now going to a, a school, so very interesting conversation to be followed with Sarita. And yes, we also have the child who is part of uh, Arohi Coversity, and uh, he's 30, and he's driving into the business of uh, illustration, animation. And so, the, the format would be such that it's going to be a conversation between the three of us. Um, Isha might have a couple of questions for Sunita and vice versa and we'll see how these uh, conversations flow. So Sunita, maybe some words from you as you join this live. <laughs> um, I've been part of Arohi I think for last nine years now. So nine years back is when I came first time with my kids. I experienced first one week and then I've been part of this uh, Arohi open uh, learning community. So it's, it's more than just a learning space for us. I think uh, it's more family and uh, there's lots of learning for the whole family here, not just my kids. So we all have grown along here. Uh, yeah, I think that's the start. <laughs> sure. Sure. So Ishan can uh, ask questions. Yeah, Ishan, may, do you want to say a few words about how your journey is and then we can get into the questions for Sunita? Yeah. Uh, about my journey yeah yeah a bit uh yeah okay so uh i started off um as, as like when i was younger i was uh, with my family we were doing homeschooling we didn't go do the conventional schooling and then at some point through a friend we found out about arohi i came for the guest week and then i came here and then recently I joined Coversity so that I can like improve my profession. Oh, okay, so yes, let's start. Maybe you can start with the first question that you might have for Sunita. Yeah, uh, so the first question is, how did you get to know about open learning? Um, I have a friend and a mentor who kept talking about Sudbury Valley School and he also spoke about uh, alternative learning center that he was running in Netherlands. And that was very interesting for me. And then he would tell a lot of stories how children took responsibilities, they were uh, mm, responsible for their own learning, for their own life. And it was very intriguing, but I thought, no, this will not happen in India. This is only in Netherlands. It's not possible for us. It's like, I can't imagine my son not going to school because my daughter was hardly one or two years then. So it was quite um, difficult to even digest, but it, it, it sounded very interesting. 
it was very uh, uh, inspiring so then i i i took my son out of the school at when he was in i think when third standard when he was 8 years old then i had called ratnesh to check about aro but then i was not ready to send my son away for a residential place i'm like no 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 how can i send all that mother's attachment then at when he was nine, he was like i need friends i'm bored of you <laughs> so that's when we came to arohi my daughter was i think then 3 uh, or 4 years and my son was 9 when i first came to arohi okay, okay. Um, maybe yeah, just one, one thought that comes to my mind uh, and pretty much what most parents are kind of in that dilemma right like uh, this all the open learning and you know the child take responsibility which sounds so fantastic and fascinating theory but it's always that one fear uh, you know suddenly you're not part of the mainstream that's a big of fear and then okay at least if the child is going to school i know they are there for whatever amount of time in this how do i figure out what will my involvement be and if i can't you know play up to that role then what all these things kind of play up in the mind um, i'm sure you would have had some of these or maybe all of these so maybe ponder a bit more on the sphere and how you overcame them yeah you- yeah so it was a sudden decision that from tomorrow my son is not going to school right but i was not prepared for it i'm like uh, nobody from the house or family was for was for it it was all against including the father the grandparents everybody were against it so i'm like oh, oh what do i do so it was quite scary i went and told my son that listen i have not been home school i haven't gone through any of this open learning process so i don't know how to do it it's very scary for me but let's figure it out together and then trust me i think every uh, now and then i would call my friend i'm like ah, am i doing the right thing my son is even forgetting what he knew i would cry i mean what if i'm uh, messing up my child's future i i don't know how many times because every time somebody said what is wrong with you are you mad why are you taking him out of the school go send him to school you're making your son uh, what uh, they said uh, dumb you're making your child dumb by not sending to the school and somebody said that you're being too stubborn to not send your child to school so there were a lot of comments my friends stopped talking to me some of them were like uh, so upset with me some relatives were angry with me some my parents and my in-laws so were so angry that she just doesn't <laughs> listen at all so i think i took one and a half years i guess to even settle into it so it was not like i was I I jumped and everything was hunky dory and nice and flower bed no 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 it was not like that so it took some time i kept meeting different families i think there was a homeschooling meet in uh, gandhi bazar kyar uh, park krishna rao park when i met families there i'm like okay i'm not the only crazy person there are many more mad people like me that gave some uh, solace <laughs> to me from then i think i uh, arohi became a really important uh, step in this journey because facilitators like aditi ratnesh leela really helped every time i came up with fear i came with uh, doubts i came with my own inhibitions and my ho- own stuff with around this they really helped me with that and what helped me more was coming here and seeing them interact with children seeing how the children are uh, being handheld still uh, allowed to take their own uh, choices make their own decisions that was new that was really new because i'm so used to telling my child what to do rather than asking him what he wants to do or she wants to do so that was a new uh, thing for me and after coming here many more families seeing them inspiring them crying venting pulling my hair everything was part of the journey lovely yeah ishan you want to ask uh, yeah okay so um so the next question i had was as a single parent what challenges did you face um converting to open school open learning 
so like i said when i started open learning of course we all were a family and i think after a year or two was when i chose to be a single parent uh, i think many many parents ask oh my god if you have to do home schooling or open learning i need to be free i can't do my work so i say i am a single parent and i have to do my work and family and open learning so then if i do it it's possible so the challenges are um sometimes it's very overwhelming because all of us are lost confused uh, we have to uh, because i am using my old methods i am i am yet to unlearn and learn i am stuck with my fears my confusions my parenting style authority style so i need to unlearn so much and i think uh, in those challenges as i said again arohi community supported i could come share here i attended lot of uh, programs jagriti uh, ilh uh, masters all these program that they did that helped me to learn lot of uh, ways to communicate to children include them involve them and actually this whole process of divorce also become a curriculum for our children we used it as a curriculum again so that instead of saying no 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 you should not know of course that was also a topic that why are you telling children uh, they should not know they should not go through the pain but they were part of the decision they uh, they were included in the decision i wouldn't say they were part of the decision they were included they were informed so it made it another thing to uh, work on ourselves improve learn not just push it away and only learn academics because this was also part of the life so we did and yes the challenges are sometimes i don't uh, have support with my children uh, i need different approach with my children um, and sometimes they don't want to come to residential place they want to be at home or um, see, as in when they grow every age group has a different challenges right when my son was 12 it was a different challenge when my daughter is 12 it's a different challenge when my son grew up at 13 14 16 there were a lot of different challenges so i think as a single parent i feel the community helped me i never felt i was alone i included my parents children we started co-parenting with my children and i took support of the community like this is the time i'm emotionally drained i need support i can't can you please help me mentors so they supported and some of them the parents there are other parents who helped as well by picking dropping financially sometimes so there were a lot of uh, support as a community i got which probably would be difficult just as a family the community was so big so as a village we we could raise the children so yeah i think i could work um i could do my own uh, growth i could uh, work on my emotional uh, stuff um i could support my parents i could support my children and we could learn and grow together reflect plan everything together yeah uh, i think two very interesting points um you know you kind of uh, touched upon sunita and i would want you to you know dwell a bit uh, deeper in that uh, the first one being your own unlearning uh, journey right because um, a lot of times even after the family or the parents have kind of shifted to an unschooling or open learning uh, journey but somewhere we are still functioning from a very uh, schooling perspective right holding on to the same perspective in that sense so maybe just go a bit deeper into your unlearning journey as a parent what all perspectives shifted for you as a parent uh, yeah let's start with that and then we'll go to the next question i think uh, i completely understand when you start you don't know what to do See, as i said i was not home school what is this home school what is this open learning what do you do with the children we were only told the minute my mom would just look at me like this i would run into the room i was so scared so we were brought up like that i was only told what to do and i would just do it and i, I was uh, always told that oh my god this is not good enough you are not good enough because you've not studied well you have not scored well 
So I don't know how to do it. I haven't seen people around me to even do it. So the 30, 28, 25, 30 years of my life, I have learned certain things which seemed doesn't work anymore. So I had to unlearn. Right? So when I started, I did recreate school at home by bringing those six books because I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm trying different, different things. How do I keep my child occupied? Because there's so many beliefs that I have. My child needs to be occupied. My child needs to learn English, math. These are so important. Uh, my child needs to know the spellings. My child needs to uh, talk to people. Uh, the child should know it, all this, blah, blah, blah. There's so many beliefs around it, right? So how do I even give them a different life if I'm doing the same thing, like uh, I think, uh, I don't know, Thomas or one of the scientists say, if you want a different result, do different, do something different. Right? If you keep doing the same thing and expect the different result, it doesn't work. So then I had to unlearn. In that, my mentor and my inner process. And as I said, I became a learner in Arohi too. I started uh, learning from them every time. I would come here, stay for a week, I would observe the facilitators, I would do and learn myself, plan, reflect myself. And uh, I think a lot of uh, the, the sessions that they do, as I said, Jagriti and all that, I think those things also really help me to unlearn. Otherwise, I would not be able to uh, take what they are saying. As I said, I will only tell them what to do. It's very easy to tell, nag, blame, judge. Uh, you are not doing anything, you are good for nothing, you have to do this or pass on my fear to them. It's very easy because this comes naturally. It takes a lot of conscious mind to zip up and wait for them to come up with something. Even today, even after nine years of journey, if I'm not present, I end up going and giving them instructions. This, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, oops, okay, sorry, why am I even telling you? So it's an, it's an ongoing journey, unlearning, learning, relearning, it's an ongoing journey. So I don't think it's going to end. We are evolving and evolving and evolving. Lovely. I think that's a fantastic way to kind of, you know, uh, share that perspective because somewhere we are all kind of conditioned to think that there is this one state I will reach where it's going to be all perfect and, you know, everything so that's where open learning kind of like really you know breaks that mold and says it's a journey and at each part of the journey the learner the child as well as the parent and the entire family is evolving with each phase so uh, so which is very comforting in the sense that whatever be your conditioning or whatever you know your fears every family will figure it out in their own yes. way and of that's course. the beauty of of course. See, like now, me. Thank you, Arti, uh, for acknowledging. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I could. I'm speaking your mind. Uh, every family has a different set of values. Every family has different rules. Every family has a different way of dealing with things. Every parenting style is different, right? So similarly, everybody's open learning journey will be different. So for me, me, my son and my daughter, we have created a nice, uh, cozy space in our house where we fight, where we grow, where we play, where we pull each other's leg, where we uh, nag each other, get fed up of each other, want to stay away from each other, want to spend time. See, it's all that happening. But only thing we do is we, we every now and then come back and reflect what is not working, what is working. And, and at least create a space where I can go and talk this, whatever I have issues with them. They can come and tell me that uh, you're really nagging. I think we need a break. I need a break from you. So that's the space we have created. But again, I can't say do the same with your family. I don't know what works for your family as an open learner. Uh, we have seen so many uh, families doing it differently. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, Maybe now we can also bit shift the focus on Ishan. Um, you know, you've been with <laughs> Ishan, don't get nervous. <laughs> uh, yes, Divya, we'll come to your question. Uh, definitely. Maybe we'll take Divya's question so that the flow is there and then we can have some conversations with Ishan as well. 
so divya is asking can you tell us how your day goes by yeah uh, i think divya first i would like to say it has been changing since my children were 9 to now it's changed right so uh, earlier it would be like we would start our day with okay these are my plan for the day what is your plan for the day what are you going to learn what are you going to do and that's how it would be or when they come to arohi they it would be like monday to friday they are here and weekends they are home so that's how it would be and now uh, my son is 18 he goes to uh, work of course and uh, his plan is different he has his own plan set of plans which he keeps following and my daughter has chosen to go to an other another school so last one year she's been going to school because she wanted friends she wanted a structure so we have found a place which were we tried for a month and we all liked it and then we continued so now that's also different and i have my own entrepreneur uh, work so i am a happiness coach so i have i do training life coaching so in that case i do one on one sessions my appointments are there i i design curriculum or i do some of my my work so i plan my day so we have all our own different plan and then we see where we have to come together like my son doesn't need me now he needs very less of me so it's more of me and my daughter's time is together so the day kept changing every time as and when they grew there was time when my daughter really needed me from morning till evening at different different times so i was like from maybe 11 to 12 i'm here or 3 to 4 i'm there 7 to 8 i'm there so i just gave them those slots when i'm available otherwise we could see where we could include and combine together and do it so it kept changing so now my day is very different i would say divya both because both are a little uh, grown up and they have learnt responsibility and planning so they do their own thing hope that, that answers yeah uh, yeah keep posting in your questions and we'll take it up as uh, the conversations flow um yeah so okay uh, now we also have ishan who is part of coversity and you are at campus uh, sunita so it would be interesting to hear from you uh, because a your son although not part of coversity but he's kind of charted uh, his professional journey outside the mainstream in the sense he's not skanda who is 18 has not done 10th or 12th or is not going to any college he's kind of we'll see what he's figured out but he's done it outside the mainstream and now you, at campus you are seeing a bunch of teenagers kind of charting their journey in a similar fashion of course each one will have their own ways as per their domains uh, maybe tell a bit about how um, as a parent how do you view this journey or um, you know was it scary? Okay, for you that okay, then twelve tak pe to okay, but after that it's like you know career, profession, settling down. Did those things come to mind? And what was the mind space like? <laughs> um, I think after two years into this open learning, the fear quite reduced. I think I think I never felt that fear because I I was not alone. i had uh, so many parents in our he doing it together so we could always lean on each other and the mentors were already there who had done this journey for so many years and their daughter asavri story inspired me so much where she has never gone to school or done any degree so i think the fear was not there i was okay when he did, when he said i don't want to do 10th but it was quite he said i don't want to do 10th i want to do 10th i don't want to it it went on for some time and then his father wanted him to do 10th so i said okay you guys figure out what you guys want to do i'm fine with or without it so uh, i think uh, that fear was not there though skanda has not been part of cover city but the foundation that arohi has led has made him so much aware and also the, the, these friends who were part of arohi they're still together okay so they question each other they push each other i think what you are doing in coversity they are doing it to themselves as well that's because they have lived together for 2 3 years here and they are like for now how many 9 10 years of friendship they have so when i see ishan doing illustration or uh, grupad doing uh, marketing videos or srijini baking something every day 
and uh, Shriya preparing her CV, her resume. I'm like, now it's no more uh, uh, astonishing because it's been in this journey. Now I'm, I'm, I feel very proud of them. I feel uh, good to see them so involved. Like parents sometimes think, okay, if you give them so much time, they will do what they want. But I think from morning till evening, they are so focused with what they want to do. Preparing the resume, talking to people, creating their recipes, creating their portfolios, uh, working on them. To an extent, actually, I think they're so much more critical about themselves. I was telling yesterday, I think you should acknowledge also what you have uh, achieved, also what you're doing, than being so critical on yourself. So I, I think they're they are doing amazing. They're always, always focused on what they want, what they're looking for, what they have to grow on, what support they need, whom to reach out to, whom to talk to. Even I think at 10 o'clock in the night, I saw Ishan having a uh, thought and, and sketching a cat in the night. So they're quite aware. Once they know what they want, I don't think... Uh, we need to be behind them. It's been how many years that I'm behind Skanda. So it's like I don't even have to worry about his uh, work because he started interning with somebody without doing 10th or 12th. He said, I will not uh, do 10th. I said, we are fine with it. And then he uh, was interning for fitness. He, he did a fitness course. And then he was interning with one uh, her father's friend who was a coach, a fitness coach. So he interned with him and then he said, I think I'm ready for it. I will start my own business. And he started his own business called Lumbar Fitness when he's doing personal training for adults. And he was very clear, I want to do it for 35 plus age group for bone strengthening and, and weight loss and all this. So he was very clear about that. So he focused on that. And now he's got an opportunity where a project has, is being created for children for fitness. So he's part of that core team and creating uh, curriculum by researching and doing a lot of work there. So he's enjoying. The reason he said I'm going to join this job is I get to learn. And that's what I see in all the Coversity children. They get to learn. That's, that's the attitude they have. I get to learn. I get to do. I get to explore myself. I think that's what I'm seeing in all these children. It's very uh, pleasing and impressive. I wish we, we I wish we got this from when we had our childhood because I started doing all this only after messing up uh, at the age of 30 I guess 32 I started uh, understanding myself knowing what do I want to do and I was talking to one girl uh, here who's come in this experience week she's so clear this is what I want this is I this is what I don't want this I can't do this much I can do I'm like uh, I wish I could have that clarity. It, it's so beautiful to see it. Right, right. Um, you have any questions or any thought for Ishan or maybe we'll have him also speak a bit. It's a bit difficult task, I know, but let's see how successful we can. He talks, only that he it's something which has to be interesting to him. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So let's see. <laughs> so Ishan, I think uh, what inspired you? to explore illustration, what do you see in illustration? Um, uh, I'm not a, uh, well, I, when I started, I just, um, it was just like a hobby. I didn't do it that much. And then I started to get more into it. And then like, I wanted it as a future career option and I kind of went and worked with some, as I'm not worked with, in a studio uh, and got kind of coached by the uh, professionals who were working there. Um, so that kind of inspired me to continue in the career of illustration. And, and what in illustration, when you say career, what do you want to do? Um, Possibly a freelance illustrator, um, but maybe also something like um, like working in a studio or for the. Thank you, Vishen. And what is the best thing about illustration or trying 
to go to internship learning from professionals what's the best thing about that um in an illust- in an illustration you're able to express something that you're not able to express with words yeah for example i i do horror art often there i'm able to express like i'm able to invoke a fear that you can't just do by writing a book or something sure. does it help to have peers for in coworkity of different age group does it help definitely i get a lot of uh, different insights on what i'm doing and how i could improve uh, my work and even if they're not in the same uh, what's it called even if they are not in the same domain as me they still have experience um doing their internships and uh, making cvs portfolios and they'll still have the uh, they'll still have useful insights on how i can improve thank you shan yeah maybe just kind of uh, taking off from where sunita uh, kind of left in the sense she spoke about peers but um ishan you seem very clear that you know somewhere illustration is your world animation is your world designing is your world so it was somewhere clear in your head that okay this is where i want to go deeper into and you already had interned with a studio and got a sense of what the industry looks like to some extent so would be worthwhile to understand uh, how does choosing a coversity journey like joining coversity how does it help you uh, you know yes peers are one aspect are there any other factors you feel uh, is helping you in your journey uh, yeah definitely uh, because of covid and everything happening there i stopped going to the studio and um basically i didn't do that much art because i did didn't feel anything i didn't feel like any inspiration or i didn't feel compelled to do it but uh when i joined coversity i was being pushed to like to um do more, more and uh, get an internship and all like i wouldn't have done that if i hadn't joined coversity i would I would be making much less art. Uh, my skills wouldn't have improved as much, and I probably wouldn't be as close as I am now to getting an internship. Okay, right. and when you say the push, uh, what is the push? Like, I'm sure nobody is telling you that you need to create so much art or something. But what is that that's pushing you? Maybe share a bit of that. That would help others. Um. when you're in an environment which has other people who are doing the same trying to do the same thing as you if you're kind of slacking it makes you feel like not good about yourself mm. so it makes me feel much better about myself when i'm able to like if i'm sitting at home by myself or something like that i will feel no motivation to do anything but if there's someone else with me who is doing something like that i will it'll give me that push to uh, do something myself nali nali how i love how you are uh, sorry sorry sunita i love how you are kind of articulating your thoughts so precise please so yes sunita please go ahead i think i would like to add what uh, ishan is saying because i myself as an adult at home if i don't feel like doing i take my phone and just crawl through or i'm just sitting idle or i just don't want to do but when you're here i was telling today in arohi you have a special clock it just runs so fast and the day is so done and we are doing so many different things so the atmosphere here uh, and people here and the kind of structure which has been created does automatically push us to do what we have always wanted to do it's more of a, it's more of internal choice but this helps the structure this uh, environment conversations reflections planning those small small spurts of uh, motivation here that we do in the morning circle and the evening thought club these things really help 
how much ever i want to bring it at home i think sometimes i i still lack doing that so even today i was reflecting that i wish i take something from here and do it at home because i do have some conflicts with my daughter she's 12 so we are still trying to figure out sometimes we're like ah and yeah sometimes it's it 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 takes on at all so these kind of atmosphere and environment helps it sure it motivates uh, anybody right so nita i uh, okay maybe we'll kind of would want to dwell a bit more on skanda's uh, journey as well um you know so we kind of got a glimpse that he's currently into fitness uh you know he did a uh, uh, course kind of did an internship uh, but it from the looks of it it looks like he was very clear about fitness and you know like bang on so maybe i know that's not the case and a lot of parents uh you know come to us and say you say at coversity we can switch i mean the child can switch their uh, you know interest for how long can it continue and what if they never figure out this is a very recurring question so yes uh, uh, would like to know skanda's journey before fitness skanda jumped from one thing to another oh my god how many things have we changed that's why i'm laughing he was like one uh, butterfly from one thing to another uh, he did uh, dance for 6 7 years and then he did cricket for one year and then he did carpentry for some time and he did forgery and uh, for what well, not forgery sorry forging i'm sorry forging where you uh, what is that metal heat the metal and turn it into some that's forging so not forgery so forging and oh, then man. he did mosquito repellent as well sometimes and then uh music was also part of, music is still sometimes part of uh, his plan but fitness came in only i think at 15 he also did training to dogs so the dog training was also part of it he did internship in prani pet then he was into snakes <sighs> something that i think some of them i even forgot and he kept jumping so much and i was always scared because i was told i am fickle minded and his father is also fickle minded we keep changing things so he will not stick to one so i'm like what if he doesn't stick to anything what if he just doesn't choose anything and every time would come and talk to aditi or ratnesh i'm like chill he's fine he'll figure it out i'm like ah you guys are saying that i don't feel that so that 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 mother's uh, anxiety was of course there uh, but i think at 15 he said i want to go to gym i'm like huh 15 gym what about the bone what about the body is it okay to go then again uh, he he spoke to another person convinced me gave me a presentation and uh, inspired me enrolled me into his topic and then he joined gym and then i think since then he's been so uh, interested when you see the child get into it you will know mm uh, what i what he wants and i think it it's okay to change i myself have changed so much in my life i never thought i'll be a facilitator or a life coach it it i started as an admin and and went into starting a school and then doing art therapy workshops and working for people doing entrepreneurship it's changed so much and after covid again i had to rediscover myself so so it's it's not going to be the same so what are we even scared our children know how to create and how to learn and how to what do you say um create a future for them when he was 10 he said you know what when i grow up i don't think i have to worry i can act i can uh, uh, dance i can do cricket i can do this i can he gave me 10 options and i did not have 10 options at the age of 35 he had 10 options then i'm like that's that's so cool <laughs> you know there's so many options possibilities that you have you can do so I I think it's okay if the change even at whatever age it's completely fine. All we want is just just to be there and witness, be a loving witness to their life and just say hey, we are there and yeah little push here and there, little reflection, little thoughts. That will be part of that. I'm not saying we are we are always agreeing to everything. Yeah, that that's a good point. Maybe we'll kind of conclude with that uh, and that's a very interesting point because somewhere it uh, does seem to uh, many parents that okay this open learning journey matlab you know it's full freedom and jo karna hai you know you can just do whatever you want 
maybe and I, I know recently you shared about how your daughter who is all of 12 kind of created one full roadmap as to or some flowchart as to why she should get her own mobile you know to kind of convince you so maybe uh, throw some light into how children kind of start taking responsibility I think they were always taking responsibility it's just that we start coming in too much but maybe you can share your perspective yeah I mostly I've always said this to parents that one thing we have to do is remove ourselves out of their way because we come in as you said we come in a lot including in, in into their space they are okay to take responsibilities it's just that we don't trust them we always want to make sure they're fine they're doing it perfectly they're doing exactly the way I want to do it they'll fail they'll do this they'll do we are so much into worrying about them they become the center of our life so whether it's open learning or not I've seen parents making the child the center of their world the family and everything is according to how it works for the child but I, I feel it's not it has to work for all if three people are there in our house it has to work for all three of us if five of us are there it has to work for all of us if it doesn't work then we have to come together sometimes my daughter is crying sometimes I'm yelling sometimes Kanda is stressed and he's like walking out of the room all this is happening but doesn't mean that we we'll, everybody can just do whatever they again we have to come back and say okay is this okay sorry I walked out uh, I, I, I was not okay I was really angry with the way you were nagging okay can we do this can we do that so we the rule is it has to work work for all that's the rule so it doesn't mean I will listen every time if I don't say yes they have to now if they're really bent upon they have to convince me like they wanted a pet for example I was against pet because of the responsibility and attachment and something happens to the uh, pet and blah 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 I have my own stuff so then both of them sat down made a presentation they said okay if not dog see dog expenses as this 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 cat these expenses these responsibilities this is what it is so let's go for rats so they came with white rats and this is how it is going to be it's uh, hassle free you just need this much space they made a presentation they gave a presentation then I had no nothing else to say but yes so yes we had uh, two years we had rat again they were responsible for it I was not cleaning it I was not feeding it I was nothing doing nothing they had to do it so it was not my responsibility so when so it is just that back and forth back and forth we go it's not one nice journey we are going in like a nice movie you run and you become big no no it doesn't happen like that there's lots going on in the house so many dramas, so many fights, conflicts, and fun also. Sure, sure. Thank you. I think, you know, Sunita, thank you for uh, sharing your journey and kind of, you know, opening up a very authentic, honest uh, journey or story of how open learning really happens. I'm sure a lot of parents, um, at least. I'm hearing and seeing comments that they're able to resonate with a lot of things that you've said. So thank you for coming in and sharing your story. Um, maybe one last thing that you would like to tell parents from your end. I want to tell you all that whether you are a single parent, not a single parent, whether you know open learning, you don't know open learning, whether people will agree to you or not agree to you, whatever your reasons are for not choosing this, it's just a fear because it's just a mindset open learning I feel it's more to do with the mindset once you jump in then the wings will come once you jump in then the support will come once you jump in you will find uh, some other other way to do it how we have found our way to uh, make it work when we are sending the child to the school whether it's far close uh, exams homework we make the arrangements food is made ready by that time somebody is arranged to pick and drop the uh, clothes books and all are arranged we sit in the cover put the covers so that's that's the choice the minute we make that choice we uh, accommodate our life around it so once you choose this you will accommodate your life around it so it's not about anything all the inhibitions we have it will be there when we start give one or two years till you have the conviction and then you will start talking like I'm talking right now if you ask me nine years back I'm like ah I would be crying screaming and going bonkers 
Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Sunita, and a uh, big thank you to Ishan as well for uh, accommodating our request to uh, come for this live and also share such uh, pearls of wisdom, I would say, you know, on his journey. Uh, Ishan, what would you like to tell teenagers? Uh, you know, often parents are kind of complaining that they're not clear, they're not taking responsibility, they're not sure how will they go about. Uh, so what do you want to tell uh, teenagers who are in the same phase, maybe as you are? Um, maybe to just like try, try to explore if you if you don't know what you want to do in life, just try to explore as many different things as you can. And, and but the thing is, you don't know that you're passionate at the beginning. You work on something, and then later, when you find out, when you find that you're, um, you're going to work on time, you're making sure you're there all the time, you'll find out that you have become passionate about it. So you can't just become passionate by just trying it for one day or one week. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ishan. Thank you so much. So, and all the teenagers, their families, whoever, whoever is listening to us now or maybe later, uh, you know, this is the time. Let us give us, uh, give our teenagers the time, the space to explore uh, different things if they're not clear deeply and also explore themselves uh, in that journey. Uh, so, thank you all who have been part of this uh, life for so long. And thank you, Sunita, and thank you, Ishan. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.